Now, with hindsight, I should have done this earlier, but it's finally time to beat up on this pirate boss. They're also all dead. Now, I'm trying to get a bit of experience off him. I'm not going as far as I did with Macbeth. But, you know, just getting a little bit of experience. You've got to watch out, though, because he's surprisingly strong. That's because he has a power ring, which gives plus five to strength. And yes, he does drop that. I'm going to get Fury to obtain it. Because, yeah, she is in need of strength. The only reason I'm warping Bridget back to the castle is so she can fight in the arena, which won't be shown on camera. But if you're playing this game, you will want to do that. You'll also want um, Teltu to fight in the arena, because she's actually surprisingly good there. A tip, let her get defeated and reduced to 1 HP, then have her fight again. If the enemy misses her, they're pretty much dead. The tougher opponents might take a bit of resetting though. Mm. Something I should mention about High Priest Edain is she has an absurdly high evasion. Which you don't want to ruin by giving her fire tomes. As if you ever would want to do that, but... Right, now he's going down. Now, of course, he does have a conversation with Bridget. I'm not actually going to show that here, because she completely obliterates him in every possible way. Yeah, just cut out Bridget fighting in the arena. And Bear will finally gain some speed, which is good. Right, now this may be a bit of a problem. But as long as we save first... Another rather to-the-point death quote. Ah, uh, yeah, that was the main reason why I didn't have Bridget kill him. She really doesn't need that power ring. That'd be overkill. And now, just time to check some stuff. By this chapter, I've got Ira, Edain, and Lachesis paired. And... Make sure you've uh, made preparations as to Kuan and Ethelin's items. Mainly, you just have to sell all of Ethelin's starves. And now it's about time we were done with this chapter. As I've said before, I like this chapter a lot more than I do the second one. Some pretty bad things have happened in this chapter so far, but... Oh crap, that's not good. That's a lot of great knights and mage knights. And now we finally are uh, introduced to the two characters who become the major villains for the rest of the first generation. Lankabolt and... Reptor. Huh. So Alvis is here on this too? That's interesting. I like how, even though all these guys are working together to bring down Sigurd's family, they're also individually manipulating the situation in order to seize power for themselves.
And now, rather abruptly, we have another subplot introduced here. So, of course, this is setting up for the next chapter. Sigurd's army has to take refuge in Silesia, because it's the only country not hostile to them at this point. So, that's all for Chapter 3. In the next chapter, we'll finally be visiting Levin's home country. See you then.